Welcome to the Secret Yarnery Crochet Vlog Episode 4. In today's fabulous episode, we I actually have, I think, a bit organized. I tried. I think so. So I have acquisitions and finished objects. And then general rambling, of course. So let's start with finished objects. My bag. I don't know if you can totally see it. It's big. So my granny squares are 14 inches. I measured. Um, and the handles are those super great handles. So I love it so much. They're the they have that cord inside, so you can't stretch them. And they're sewn on with a cute circle at the bottom. I did a tutorial on this already. I'm sure lots of you have already seen it. So it's square and it's big. It's actually really comfy because I use like this eyelash chamois chenille in blue and navy for the handles plus that mixed wool and alpaca blend, the multicolored one, this one, for the handles. So they're super soft. They feel like better than terry cloth. Like they feel so good. So I actually w use this for my purse yesterday when I went shopping and I loved it and two strangers complimented me on it I was like thank you very much I resisted the urge to say oh I made it myself blah, blah, blah. I just said thank you and even I think my husband saw it last night who does not give compliments or pay attention to my crochet and he said as he left the room nice bag kind of slowly underneath his br underneath his breath but he really meant it because uh, well, he likes my stuff, but you know what I mean. He wouldn't be telling me to use it as a handbag. You know what I mean. He's uh, he's a shoes and purses should be proper kind of guy. So that was a big compliment. So anyway, that is my finished ba my finished bag. I love it. I want to make another as I do, but not as a square. I want to do two big squares like this, approximately bigger, smaller at least the same size, maybe a bit bigger, but then on the sides I just want to do like a strip. So like a rectangular granny square that goes all the way along on the three sides is what I want to do, or else a back and forth, but I think like a rectangular granny square, once I figure that out, would be super cool. Just maybe like four rows. So it's not like a big bulky thing under your arm, but it's a super cute, cool, you know, like actually a purse. So love it finished it great uh, check it out on the tutorials um, what else did I do yesterday I had a very good crocheting day so I started with these Elfie hats middle of the night I wake up check out YouTube and I always if I had a night I wanted to make Santa hats for this biz buzz but then I'm like Santa hats like how much red and white are you going to do? You're going to, like, it's not that fun, you know what I mean? So I'm like, what about elf hats? Because they don't have to be red and white. You can do, like, all your cool colors. So Google that on YouTube, or YouTube that. And, of course, Bob Wilson123 has a tutorial. And I really like her tutorials. It's, like, common sense. And she seems to, in uh, her crochet, I like her crochet. And I like how she explains things. So this is pretty much her tutorial, although... Hers goes skinny the whole way, so you have this long tube that hooks on to the top of your hat. Um, I wasn't too keen on it. I just wanted it thicker. So I went. I, did, I followed her pattern to here, and then followed her idea up, and then followed her pattern from up there. Minus the edging. I did the edging, like my own edging. Um, as I do. So I did the uh, worsted weight chenille for the edging in... A front post back post and then just to size it I did two rows of single crochet I think both of them were decreases even because it was just too big I have a small head apparently so I wanted it to fit me so I have that one super cute and then thought about it and made this one so this one I did with double crochet this other one this is half doubles this is doubles 
ha d regular double crochet is fine with me. Plus, of course, it's faster. So I did double crochets on this one, and I did an increase every fourth row on a spiral. There's no joining. So every fourth row, I did an increase of one, one, one until here. And here, I did an increase every four stitches all the way around, all the way around until it was about the same size as your crown would be and then I didn't do increases, I just went down. So that one worked out really well. I have my end to sew in there. Um, and then with the sizing, I just on my last row of single crochet, I did a decrease every fourth, no, my fifth and sixth stitches I did together for the last row of single crochet just to pull it up onto your head you know make sure it kind of holds a bit and cinches in that ribbing which is again front post back post so I'm really happy with that and like that's cute so now my, my oldest son wants one in black orange or no black red and blue I don't know something so uh, I got the color combination for this hat from this slipper. So this slipper I was making, I was, I was making one, and then I can do this second one as a tutorial. So, because I know I need to do a slipper tutorial. So, um, I did this slipper also yesterday. And then, I'm telling you, I, it was a crazy day. Tissue box covers. I went to the grocery store, also did my shopping, who knew, um, and found those square tissue boxes, which sometimes we don't get here, but we did, and I checked them, and they're square, so good. I don't want a rectangular one. So then I did the granny square, granny squares for the sides, and the chain, chain 12 for the center ring with the 24 double crochets, divided into granny square shells. Uh, but I did a chain 14 for the center ring. I did a, excuse me, I tell you, you start filming yourself and you're itchy all over. Ugh. I did one with the 12 and it was a bit tight. It looked like the tissue was never going to, it looked too small. So I did a 14 for this one and then the 24 stitches around. So that's cute. I thought my ladies can do that. And then I did the gray uh, row it, join as you go, which I'm not. I don't know if I'm crazy about it or not crazy about it. For the next ones, I think I'm just going to leave the long tails and then sew them together. I think, try it at least, or maybe single crochet them together. I don't know. I mean, join as you go is still cute. I still like it. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. And then one row of single crochet along the bottom just to cinch it in. Well, you know, finish it off a little bit. So that was yesterday. Awesome. Happy with it. And then last night, well, I had another idea, which was not a tea cozy. But tea cozy, cute, right? So I did the chenille, worsted weight chenille, was it called popcorn, large popcorn flower um, for the top. And then I, was, well, I started by doing leaves, and then the leaves were silly. So then for my third round of flower, I did leaves. So I think that turned out pretty cute. Anyway, how what I started to do was make samples. I'm training these ladies tomorrow, so I'm trying to have, I don't know how many ladies are coming, I think about five or six. So I would like to have five or six projects and then have each lady doing one particular thing so that they can get good at one particular thing instead of everybody switching and you know learning a bunch of things but never really getting perfect at anything is my thinking so what I wanted to do is make you know this stitching where you go into the back loops so double crochet into the back loops two rectangles uh, sew them together sew them across the top two pom-poms on the side cute little hat edge it so I'm like, that'd be super cute, and I can pom-pom, like, for days. <sighs> love my pom-poms. So I thought that would be really cute. So I started making my first rectangle when it started to really look like the same... Well, I remember this picture uh, I saw on Instagram, and it was a tea cozy made from that stitch. And I was like, oh, I have that old 
teapot, uh, for those of you not in Kenya. These are our general, they're aluminum, or I don't know, they're not aluminum, I guess. They're metal of some sort. Actually, I don't know what the heck they are. It's heavy. It's not like it's light. Um, anyway, metal teapots stamped on the bottom made in Kenya. So there, this is the large one. There's also a smaller one. So I thought it would be cute to have, actually I actually haven't seen them in grocery stores for a while, but I haven't looked. Anyway, this is original. So I'm like, let me make a tea cozy for that. So it's, you know, Kenyan and Kenyan. Plus I don't, I don't want to take my good teapots anywhere near, like not out of the kitchen, you know what I mean? <laughs> or not out of your house. So, uh, made a little tea cozy, uh, and then watched a tutorial after I finished this, and there's an easier way of doing it than I did it, so of course there is. So I think I can get the ladies making these rectangles, and some can be tea cozies, and some will be hats. So I'm just going to have them do the bits and pieces, and then I'll assemble until, until I'm sure they can assemble, I think. I just don't want them going through a bunch of yarn, and then not being able to sell anything and then I'll feel bad being like you know they spent their time on it too I don't want them doing anything for free but if I can't sell it but then the pieces I think I could always put them together and you know well anyway start that way so those were what I did yesterday those are my finished objects so happy about the flower now what should I go to next? While we're talking about the ladies, let me stay with that. Uh, so I'm thinking of having each lady obviously do one particular thing, a piece of it, not finish the whole thing. So if someone's making the hats, they'll just do the acrylic part and then I'll put the pom-pom and the trim. So if it's too big or too small or too weird, I can undo it also and kind of fix it, or they can undo it and kind of fix it. So just the acrylic part of that. Uh, slippers, but not with the chenille, just with two strands of acrylic. Oh, I was going to show those ones. Um, they're still really super cute, very functional. So I was going to have ladies do that. They can even finish those ones up because that's not too tricky. And the granny squares, but just the squares, leaving an extra long tail, a couple feet, so I can sew it together or crochet it together or whatever I want to do. And these ones, just the rectangles. So some can be hats, some can be tea cozies. Because I'm sure I need more hats than tea cozies. Not that I really need a lot of hats, but they're cute. Uh, so then, for my Amazon shopping, which is coming next week, if the stars align, of course. Um, we, I got these big paper pom-poms to hang from the ceiling. Because I thought it would be faster than making super huge pom-poms and plus much more cost-effective. So then I was thinking, perhaps I should have the crocheted items in the tent matching the colors of the pom-poms. So like white background, colorful pom-poms and the stuff inside white with the colorful pom-pom colors made out of crochet. So these are the colors that, that are the, generally the same as the color of the pom-poms. So I'm thinking of having the ladies make all their stuff in a combination of like white with like two of these other colors, like complementary uh, colors. Oh, there's a big flock of sheep walking across the back field. That's cool. I'll put a picture of that at the end of the vlog. Good thing about where I live, it's amazing. It's like being on safari. Anyway, thinking of using these colors for most of the um, things inside, most of our crocheted items, other than like literal Christmas, like the red and green and stuff like that. But these for the colors of our hats and our, um, well, you know, the other stuff around the house. So I thought that might be kind of cute. It might tie everything together. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that. If you have an opinion, if it's too matchy-matchy, leave it in the comments below. There's eight, there's eight different colors plus neutrals. I think you can also do some things with black. It doesn't all have to be white, but generally, you know, white's so cheery. 
Okay, so that's that. That's my ladies. That's tomorrow. That's my finished objects from yesterday. Crazy day. Um, loved it. Uh, but even the mandalas for our stools, like, wouldn't that just be so cute? Like, definitely mandalas in these colors. A mix of them. Like, not every single color and every single mandala. But, like, that'd be so cute for those stools, right? Like, so country kitchen. Love it. Well, modern country kitchen. All right, now, I also got our shipment of yarn from Turkey. So, this came on Saturday. Let me start with what? Let's start with bamboo. We'll start with bamboo and work our way down. So this bamboo I had already. It looked online like silver, but then you never know, maybe it was like a flash, a camera flash. I mean, you don't know, but it is, I don't know if it'll focus on you. Silver. So silver bamboo for a three millimeter hook. So 50 grams is 200 meters. Pure bamboo. So soft, so dreamy, like can't wait for that. So I also got it in ivory but it's like a it's like a pearl I suppose it has a bit of sheen to it too which I think is so gorgeous gorgeous uh, this is also 100% bamboo this is natural bamboo I also have this in like an off-white but I got this I bought all of it I bought everything they had left in stock because it was on sale and how it's so soft I mean bamboo it's dreamy this is 50 grams and 125 meters. It also says a three millimeter. This is a three millimeter needle. These, the needle sizes are for knitting. So three millimeter, three millimeter, use what you'd like. On keeping with the bamboo, we had these two before. I made a really nice uh, tunic out of this one and this one as well. I didn't make anything out of this one yet, but I had it before, but I thought I'd show you. Uh, so this is cotton bamboo. So it's 60% bamboo, 40% cotton, 100 grams, and it's 140 meters. So those are delicious. It's supposed to be a three to four millimeter needle for, for knitting. So those are, those are great. I got more of those because this is fabulous and that's fabulous. And I also got this really nice lavender color. And then this, also this really nice steely bluey gray. I thought those are so pretty. They're probably not my color. They probably make me look weird, but I love it. Really good for clothing. Uh, I don't think it has the color written on it, or the name of the color. You're just supposed to know that it's lavender or gray. Anyway, those are my bamboos. That's the end of my bamboo, my new bamboo. These are cotton, 100% cotton. Doo -doo -doo. Natural cotton air. So they are 100 gram balls, 300 meters. For a three for three to four millimeter needles, I use the same for hooks to be honest. And the good thing about this one, so I got it just in the two colors, the light gray and the denim. The good thing about this kind, opposed to just the natural cotton, is this is woven together, so it can't split. Uh, I don't know if I can open it up to show you. No, I can't really. But it's it's um woven together like a cord or like a macrame cord or whatever so it, it won't split when you're using it um it's not the softest but what's soft after bamboo right so maybe i should start with cotton next time don't start with bamboo mental note to self now i got these crazy ones for christmas ornaments not that they're necessarily Christmas colors, but 
they're sparkly. I like the copper a lot actually. So these are, what are they? Metallic Lurex and polyester. So polyester, right? They're also a, a, like a cord woven together so they don't split. 50 grams is 175 meters and they say a four millimeter hook. I don't know, but I thought they'd be cute even woven in with another, like with just regular acrylic, just so there's a bit of sparkle with whatever color you can kind of tone those down with, because I know they're a bit bright, but how cute. So, got those. Oh, there's two more I got also, but more shiny sparkles for Christmas, but I left them out there. I'll show them to you next time. And I officially have no yarn being ordered. I normally am always, I've always ordered yarn, and then I'm always having some, I'm always waiting for some, but officially now I have nothing, I'm waiting for nothing. And I feel, I feel good about that. I'm like a bit proud of my restraint. So that's it for things I've bought. That's it for things I've made. <sighs> things I'm doing. A lot, as always. So I have, uh, I have tutorials to make. I want to make like a basic stitches one, like just quick little ones, like your chain, your single, your half double, your double, your treble, and then, uh, you know, your shells. Not shells, I guess they're, what are they, clusters, DC3 tog, those kind of things. Uh, like just short little clips of those, but I, I honestly, just because I want to do it doesn't mean I have time. So that's on my list of things, but not that urgent. I need to make uh, or design and have printed, you know we have our business cards, but I, I get them done um, and then if I, I redo it. So they're double sided, but not like a business card, more like a book. So I go, I make them like that. So I have like my logo on the front and then a little blurb about Secret Yarner on the inside and then a to and from like a gift tag and then a little logo or empty on the back. Well there's something on the back but I don't know what. Or it handmade by kind of thing so whoever made it can sign their name and then you just kind of hole punch it and put it on all your stuff and then you have a super cute gift tag plus you can also put like an insert paper on the inside with the price and the name of whatever it is. So whoever, if it's a gift you can just rip that out and you still have a cute gift card to go on your stuff. So I need to get those printed up. Actually this week, um, I need them by Monday for sure. We have, I have my things at one of these shops at a school in Nairobi and they sent me an email saying there's an intake on Tuesday and they need more things. So that's officially bumping up onto the urgent list of things I need to do. Um, I also want to do signs, like you need a sign for my, uh, for the tent. But I can get that done later when I, once I think about it. And that's about it. So today I'm going to be making like a basic rectangle in probably three different sizes, a small, medium, large, for the ladies or the lady to see what I need done so she can match it. And same, I'm going to make, I'll make one hat, but just the acrylic part so she can see what it's supposed to look like. Then I was thinking of tracing it out on paper and then making like so that she can just match the shape because it's pretty hard to uh, like you kind of just eyeball the whole thing right so my tail. So I was thinking of doing that and same I'll make a slipper one of these just out of the out of acrylic so acrylic and acrylic and uh, take that so that she, so then slipper lady I might have two ladies making slippers I don't know let's see what happens tomorrow and I've started filming the hug shrug tutorial my problem is so much choice like what yarn am I going to use I don't want to make a hug shrug that I, d I don't want to make one out of acrylic because I don't have to anymore. I have like so much deliciousness. I also want to make one that you can actually see me doing the stitches. I mean, I really want one out of chenille. And I started one out of chenille, not this color, the lighter yellow color. But then you can't see my stitches either. So that's not fair. So then I started doing 
a hag shrug from Yara Chenille and a tutorial with another acrylic, but I just want to do a tutorial of a hug shrug where you can see the stitches that is not with something that's acrylic. I know I'm being so fussy. So all my deliciousness, I mean I have so much, it's just too much choice, there's too much choice. So, but I'm working on it and thank you for your uh, suggestions, I'm working on it. And slipper tutorial, haven't started working on it but have the first one done so when I do start the slipper tutorial that'll be quick. And that's it. I'm making my bits and pieces for my ladies. I'm packing up, I'm thinking of making like the bags like each, like mixing, mixing the colors like say I want uh, tissue box covers out of like these three colors and then putting them in a bag with the pattern instructions in the hook so that that lady has that yarn for that project so that I'm a bit more prepared when I go there tomorrow. Um, so I'm kind of getting set up like that. And that's about it. It's a short day for my kids, so they're home earlier today. So I will get a lot done before they do come home, including putting this video up. Yay! <sighs> so that is my news. That's what I've been working on. I'm going to try to get my work done during the week, so on the weekend I can spend one day not crocheting. I think my husband's a bit, my kids are used to it, and they're, you know, I'm still around, I'm sitting right there, but my husband would like more, well, he wants to do more stuff together, right, without my hook in my hand. So I'm going to try to get done before the weekend. It's probably me just talking, I'm probably dreaming, I'm probably going to be sitting on Sunday hooking away, but what do you do? Anyway, that's me, that's what I got going on, tons of stuff. But I'm also starting to feel better about it because I've got it broken down into things and pieces that I'm confident these ladies can help me make. And the lady making the Christmas balls from the last vlog, she has called me today saying she's finished with her nine balls of yarn. So she's made nine hundred grams of Christmas balls. So I asked her how many of that's going to be that's exciting. So maybe that's even done. We have great ideas for packaging but I'm going to still work on that and show you in the next vlog. Not packaging, I guess display because everything, you know, displays everything. So uh, working on all of that. And that's it. That's it for me. Busy being crazy. Deciding if a 10 by 10 foot tent is the right size or a 20 by 20. Is 20 by 20 too big? I'm just going to be sitting in the middle of nowhere and, you know, being like, hello, have you ever crocheted before? To like people on the other side of China. I mean, I don't even know. Or is 10 by 10 going to be so cramped? It's like if you want to sit and crochet, you can't because people are shopping over your head. I don't know. I've got chalk and I'm going to draw it out on the driveway and then see how much stuff I can get into a 10 by 10 working on it. So that's it for me this week. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sharing. If you did enjoy these vlogs or the, my tutorials, please like, subscribe, and share. You know everybody asks you to do that and you're like, n like, that's silly and no. Uh, it actually really helps. How it does help is the more comments and uh, thumbs up uh, video has, the more relevant YouTube sees it as, so that it comes up in when you search for it. If you just search crochet tutorials, blah, 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 if a video has a lot of likes, subscribe, subscribers, it shows up. If it doesn't, you have to, like, enter the name and, you know, like, it just doesn't come up. So that's why everyone's asking you to give a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share, and please do. It totally helps out. The more crochet, crochet for people, the better. I'm working on the Hug Shark tutorial. Uh, thank you very much. I love hug shrugs and I don't need another acrylic one so I'm always looking over there uh, even when I'm talking to you I'm trying to look for something not textured so that you can see the stitches and like something I could wear. So before well I was still filming but apparently my camera was not filming I was looking over there and found this delicious cotton. It is cotton uh, what do they call cotton tubing? Cotton tape cotton tape so it's woven together like so it doesn't split basically it's like fishing net kinda 
um, in this nice variegated turquoise to navy or turquoise to blue denim color. So I'm going to make that into my hug shrug. I've started the tutorial, but I used chenille as I do, and then you can't see my stitches, so that's not fair. So then I started with just acrylic, like a little sampler. What's fun about that? So I want to do a real tutorial, like for something I can wear and something you can see. So yay! Starting again, doing this one next week, obviously, because this week's just about over. So that's good news. Thank you for help, like making me sit here, <laughs> encouraging me to sit here, I should say. And that's why I'm always looking over there. It's all these projects in my head, and I'm trying to like match up my yarns. So thank you. So off I go. I have this nice delivery of natural cotton yarn for a friend. So a courier is coming to fetch that to take it to her. Yay! Online shopping is great. So that's on the way out. And that's what I'm up to. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments of, of what you're up to uh, in the comments below. Oh my gosh, and to help that be easier, I made a Facebook group. So I'll put the link in the description box below so you can basically share your projects, what you're working on, comments, introduce yourself, everything, uh, here or there, or here and there, and it's, because you're just on YouTube, you can't share pictures, which is, you know, I want to see what you're doing. So over there, uh, it's The Secret Yarnery Crochet Group. You can just join. You don't have to ask to join. It's public. It's for all of us. We can all share. And um, everybody can post pictures. So go ahead. Use that as your backyard. Post your stuff. Love. Everybody can see what you're up to. It's super cool. And I better take a picture of those sheep before they leave. They're like all dispersed now. They used to be in a cluster. Now they're like eating grass everywhere. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. St have a great week. I'll probably see you on Friday. I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow with those ladies. And stay hooked. Welcome to the Secret Yarnery Vlog Episode 4. That's going to be hard to do. It's 22. Better stop doing that.